Hello, we are going to take a look at how our understanding of genetics has developed over time. And one of the key players in this development of our understanding was a monk. Uh, he was an Austrian monk, I believe. And his name was Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel. And he did a lot of work in uh, to do with inheritance. And he worked with a particular type of living thing. You've got two diagrams of those there. And those are both pea plants. So those are plants that produce peas. And he spent a lot of time, maybe six or seven years or more, looking at how different characteristics in pea plants were inherited. And one of those was height. So we have a tall pea plant there and a short one there. And if you cross them together, in other words, if you mate them together, what kind of pea plants will you get in the offspring? The expectation at the time before this work was done that you might get something in between so maybe medium-sized pea plants but as we know now things might not turn out quite like that we actually know that inheritance of height in pea plants is controlled by a single gene with two alleles so that tall plant there has two capital T's and this small one has two recessive T's or two lowercase T's and therefore if we did a cross by looking at the alleles and this is just a recap of uh, what we've done previously in previous videos. But what you would see is that we would have a combination of alleles in the offspring as shown on the screen. We would get 100% tall plants. And actually, as you could see, they would be what we call heterozygous. Okay, and there's all our tall pea plants. And the genotype of all these, as we just said, is capital T and lowercase t. What would happen if you cross two of those together? If you cross those two pea plants together, we'll have a look at the answer for that at the end of the video. You might want to pause here and give that a go and check the answer at the end. So, Gregor Mendel did a lot of work on the genetics and inheritance of pea plants, although he didn't know he was doing genetics. But what he concluded was that there were what, we, what he called units of inheritance, units of inheritance passed on to the offspring that we now know are called genes. So there were units, he called them units of inheritance, we know those as genes. Now his work actually wasn't appreciated in his lifetime for a whole variety of reasons. The first one was that scientists, or in fact no one, knew about chromosomes or DNA or genes. Uh, there were already theories of how things were, or how features were inherited. For example, if you cross the tall plant with a short plant, you would probably end up with a medium-sized plant, or a plant which has a height somewhere in between. His work was quite complex for at the time, and even other scientists did not um, have similar ideas to that. He was not considered a scientist because he actually wasn't a scientist, so he was not well known. Um, and his work, when he did publish it, was published in a fairly unknown journal. I believe it was some kind of gardening journal rather than a science journal, but it certainly wasn't a science journal, so not many scientists actually had a look to see what he had done and what he had written about. And the last thing was that... Um, he had, he had only worked on pea plants. So even if his ideas were correct, he had only done the work on pea plants, would it have the same results on other types of plant or even other living things? So these were the reasons why his work was not actually accepted or believed in his lifetime. I've only highlighted five points there. There should be uh, six highlighted there. But these were the reasons why his work was not accepted and actually not accepted until after it was rediscovered after his death. So we can look at a quick timeline of some of the events in terms of our discovery and understanding of genetics. Mendel's pea work on pea plants was done around about 1856 to 1863, so that's a period of seven years. You'll remember from a previous video, Darwin released his book on the origin of species in 1859, so that was kind of going on at the same time, but the two weren't linked. He died, Mendel died in 1884, and unfortunately, as we said, his work was not actually discovered or recognised during his lifetime, which often happens or sometimes happens with scientists. Um, we can actually add another part of this timeline. Um, his work eventually was rediscovered, but it wasn't too long afterwards. In about 1900, his work was rediscovered simultaneously at the same time by three other scientists. And that's when it kind of started gaining some recognition around about 1900s. There was other work done as well. So in the early 1900s, we have the development or the discovery of chromosomes and Mendel's units of inheritance seem to behave in the same way that chromosomes behaved. So this was further evidence that he was correct in his conclusions. It was discovered that these chromosomes behaved in the same way as the units. And of course, as we said before, we know that those units were actually genes. 
the last thing is that we have the, the discovery of the gene and gene function that was worked out. And what we're trying to say by this whole video actually is that there were two main things that to take into consideration when we look at the discovery of it, or the understanding of genetics. And those are that the the discovery and understanding has developed over time and it's involved many scientists. Just got a spelling mistake there to correct. But it involved the work of many scientists and in fact more than we just outlined in this uh, slide here. Okay, so the final thing to do is to look at the answer to the question I gave you at the beginning, which was what happens if you cross two heterozygous plants, the capital T, lowercase t, P plants that is. So we could quickly do our cross to see what the ratios are. And we've done this a few times now, so hopefully this makes sense. Makes, this makes sense. We have a three to one ratio of tall to short. The one I've highlighted there is a recessive short. We have two homozygous and two heterozygous plants and the ratio as we've got on the screen there. So there's the answer to that question that you might have had a go at. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon.